Today we're talking about herpes, because let's be real, you've Googled it at one point. So we're gonna go through all of it, what it is, where it shows up, and what you need to look for if you're worried about having it. I'm Dr. Shetta Jamie Rutland. I'm a pulmonary critical care physician in Southern California, and you are? Dr. Alok Patel. I'm a pediatrician who works in the hospital, and I like to run my mouth in the name of public health. In other words, we've seen lots of herpes, and I'm sure you guys have heard about it, so let's talk about it. First of all, what is herpes? Herpes is a sexually transmitted infection. That is, you get it most of the time when people are having intercourse with one another. When you're looking at outbreaks, people are gonna have vesicles. These are raised little bumps in the areas of the genitals or in your mouth, which may cluster and look really, really red. And here's the thing. When we think herpes, because thank you television and pop culture, you often think about genital herpes, but they can show up anywhere on your body. And as a pediatrician, I worry about this because if we give a newborn baby herpes from any source, from your arm, your back, your lips, anywhere, that baby can get a life-threatening infection because herpes in a newborn can cause meningitis, inflammation of the brain, and that is a bad thing. And as we discussed previously, the number one thing that you need to understand about herpes is that it's really caused by two different viruses, HSV-1, herpes simplex virus 1, and HSV-2, herpes simplex virus 2. Have you ever had herpes? I was gonna ask you the same thing because number two, it's way more common than you think. Jamie may actually have herpes. <laughs> Maybe. In fact, one in five US adults have herpes, but over 400 million people worldwide have HSV2 infection. I'm not judging, by the way. If you do have herpes, you can tell me. I, I think it's fine if you want to let me know. If you've ever been on Valtrex <laughs> or anything like that, just let me know, please. So 400 million people worldwide. How does this break up in terms of race, sex, gender, ethnicity? You know, that's actually the risk of genital herpes. It's based on sex, number of partners, ethnicities. Blacks who are non-Hispanic have a three to four time the prevalence of non-Hispanic whites or Mexican-Americans and females actually have twice the prevalence as males. So I wonder how much of this is behavior versus access to healthcare, or maybe skin color, it's harder to diagnose, we know. That's a very good question. I think that behavior has something to do with it because when you think about it, the number of sexual partners are people who are engaging in intercourse, right? So yeah, behavior has something to do with it, right? And I'm gonna guess that the reason that older people may have a higher risk is because you have more sex as you get older. Perfect. You're exactly right. And in fact, the number of lifetime sexual partners, as that increases, the prevalence of those individuals that have a lot of lifetime sexual partners increases. Well, you're Palm Creek Care, so you work with the elderly population, right? I do. Like, they get down, don't they? You know, they do. And I see a lot of general herpes in elderly individuals. You'd be surprised. Here's the thing is I don't want them to get sick, but I actually, I'm happy that they're getting laid. Is that bad? That's not bad. <laughs> no, life doesn't end. I don't think life ends at all. In fact, I think sex is an important part of life. But there are other common things that I think people should know. Number three, in the average human being, it is not life-threatening. It's just scary and it has kind of a crazy name. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how it's become this really scary term, right? People always talk about herpes and having close contact people with herpes, but it really isn't life-threatening in people who are normal. I think it's because it's scary looking. And the people who talk about it, they're usually talking about it in reference to genital herpes. But we've got to remember, it's so incredibly common, 400 million people, as you mentioned. So clearly a lot of people are living completely healthy, long lives with herpes. Yeah, and the thing about it is the vesicles or the way that it looks in the genitalia area is actually really scary, right? It gets inflamed. You see these little bumps and people are really scared of that. And if you can get those bumps and that inflammation just by having sex, people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have that, so I don't want that. If you're talking to a friend, family, whatever, and you're like, hey, I'm Dr. Rutland, I need you to care about herpes, and they're like, I don't care, do you have to go immediately to like the scary photos to get them to be like, ah! You know, it's funny, I do, and I have done that. And I do <laughs> keep a couple of those photos on my phone to be able to show those pictures. What are these photos you keep on your phone? Let me show you a couple, look at these. Yeah, whip them out. Look at that, you see that? Oh, God. Yeah. No, hold on, I don't wanna know where those photos are from, but what? I'm assuming they're medical, textbook, cleared photos. 100%, would that scare you? <laughs> yes, I use photos like this. I use the term genital warts to get people to take the HSV vaccine seriously. They gotta take it seriously. And the other people and the other individuals who need to take it seriously are individuals who are immunocompromised. That is individuals who do not have a full functioning immune system. Let's get into number four. 
So in individuals who are immunocompromised and don't have a full functioning immune system, herpes actually means something. As a pulmonary and critical care attending. Wait, 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 hold on. I want you to pretend that I'm in junior high and I did not go to medical school. I don't know what the hell you're saying. So like now dumb it down to me. So herpes is not a big deal? It is not a big deal if you're normal. But remember, when you look inside the body, there are cells inside the body that fight infection. They clear viruses, they beat them up. If those cells are not able to beat up the virus or beat up the bacteria, your immune system is compromised. It doesn't work as well. So in individuals like that, herpes can take over the body's function and can ultimately lead to death. The cells in my body that fight the cold work well, so I, I don't care about herpes. I can get it. I'm Correct. good, I'm good. You're good. If you have normal, Protoplasm, I call that protoplasm. A protoplasm means is you have a full functioning, healthy body, everything works as well as it should. And people in which that doesn't happen, those are the individuals we worry about the most because they can develop all kinds of herpes viruses. It's not just HSV-1 and HSV-2. The virus that causes chickenpox is a herpes virus, right? There's other herpes viruses that people with immune systems that don't work can cause a cancer. There's other herpes viruses that cause a mono-like illness. My boy got mono for right. making out with someone after the football game. He got herpes? Yeah, that's a form of a herpes virus. That's correct. And I had chicken pox when I was seven, so I also had herpes? And so did I. I had it when I was seven. But none of those are a big deal, right? Because our immune systems are this BS term that you just made up, protoplasm. <laughs> that's right. So none of it matters because our protoplasm... Am I a protoplasm? What the hell is a protoplasm? You're a protoplasm. Okay, so I'm a protoplasm. My cells are working normally. I don't have to worry about herpes. But no. can I, do I have to worry about spreading it to somebody else? You have to worry about spreading it to somebody else because you can. The thing about herpes is it's really difficult to know when you're shedding virus because we don't know if you're shedding virus when you have all those vesicles on you like we did in chicken pox. But I remember when I was a kid, my mom was like, hey, Janelle has chicken pox. Go across the street and go get you some chicken pox. I went across the street, touched <laughs> Janelle, I had chicken pox and was taking those cold baths and rubbing my skin in calamine lotion for a week. I went across the street and touched Janelle. We're just that, that, that sentence. But we were basically saying it's chicken pox parties. That's what we're talking about. Chicken pox parties with Janelle Stockton. Janelle Stockton is going to sue the shit out of this channel. But we don't recommend chicken pox parties anymore, right? Because we can like, a lot of people can get sick. A lot of people can get sick and you will get sick. So that's why now there's a vaccine for chicken pox. Okay, so this makes a lot more sense now because even though we don't really care, my junior high brain right now, I'm like, if I don't care personally about getting herpes, I gotta think about the community level, like other people out there. Yeah, because you can spread it to other people and you don't know who has a functioning immune system and who doesn't have a functioning immune system. Because if grandma or grandpa get herpes, we're worried because as we age, our immune system doesn't work as well. Because the protoplasm starts to fall apart. Does Pro that make sense? That's exactly no, right. Literally no one uses that term. Number five, even though we said you don't always have to treat herpes, there is treatment for those who are high risk, but you gotta diagnose it first. And the way we do that, I promise this is not as scary as it sounds, is we literally swab one of the lesions, it's a little painful, and we send that down to the lab so that they can then look for pieces of the DNA virus. That's exactly what they do, is they look for pieces of the DNA virus, and then we can understand if herpes is contributing to that symptomatic infection, because most of the time you're swabbing it when somebody is symptomatic. But the way that we actually treat individuals, especially individuals who are immunocompromised, is we use drugs that actually look like the DNA of the virus. And so you give them a drug, acyclovir, valacyclovir, gancyclovir, and these drugs are gonna incorporate into the viral DNA, but that DNA is uninterpretable. So the virus just dies. Here's the thing, so should everyone with herpes just run out and be like, I'm gonna go take one of the cyclovirs, one of the antiviral medications? Not necessarily, but we all know that this day and age, everybody is scared, so everybody does. I mean, I think I prescribe acyclovir or valacyclovir three to five times a week, right? Because we're not just talking about genital herpes, we also have to talk when herpes is reactivated on your skin, which we call shingles, and it's painful as a... It is extremely, extraordinarily painful. You get a bunch of little vesicles, skin lesions that look red, across a certain area of skin, and it's just so painful. So we do treat those individuals. Here's what's super dope about shingles. I shouldn't say dope. So here's the thing that doctors do is we get really excited when something is really interesting, even though it's like scary to the average person. But in our spinal cords and the nerves that come out of it, 
the shingles from herpes virus can actually spread on one specific part of your body mm -hmm. and it won't cross over the midline or your spine, which is why it kind of lives in this like band-like formation. Mm -hmm. So if you have a friend or a relative or your gardener or someone that you're kicking it with, I don't know what gardener, I don't know why that came in there, but someone that you're talking to and they're like, hey, my skin really hurts. And there's little vesicles popping up and it's weird because it's this little band-like formation. You can be like, you have shingles, I am a smart, human being and I just diagnosed it. And we call that the dermatomal distribution. Boom! So, what are the top five things that you learned about herpes today and what we want you to know? Number one, what exactly is herpes? Number two, who gets herpes? Number three, herpes is a lot more common than you think. One of your friends probably has it. Number four, this is what happens to your body when you actually get the infection. And number five, there is a way to diagnose and treat herpes if you need it. Thank you guys for being here. I'm Dr. Rutland, this is Dr. Patel. Make sure you wrap it up. Please.